Cars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the New Hampshire State Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. WNDS Sports presents... New England's favorite bowling show. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Featuring the best bowlers from around the region. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And now your hosts, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. Hello again, everybody, and welcome into another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. And it's the time of year when we digress from our normal ladder series and introduce you to some of the finest women candlepin bowlers in America. Well, that's very true. We have a, a nice mix of uh, some of the seasoned professionals like Mike Morgan, Tim Lipke, Deb Regan, and there'll be four bowlers in the next four weeks who we've never seen on TV before. Mixed doubles competition. Let's meet our first team. Competing this afternoon, our number five seed, Cindy Beatrice from Wilmington and John Plant from Litchfield, New All Hampshire. Right. Cindy coming in with an average of 118. High single, 188. Her high triple is 433. She bowls at Woburn and Park Place. And John Plant out of Litchfield with a 128 average. High single, 187. Best triple, 454. He does his bowling at Park Place and is a part of the Traveling Pro League. And they bowl a combined 1225 in the roll-off to earn the number five seed, and they'll be taking on our fourth seeded team, Deb Regan, Manchester, and Scott Bradish from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Deb Regan, pretty much a perennial performer in the uh, mixed doubles every year, averaging 123, high single of 191, and high triple 439, does her bowling at Exeter and Park Place, and Scott Bradish, 126 average, high single 196, best triple 474. He, like many other bowlers, at Park Place and Wyndham also. And they rolled a 12-36 in the roll-off and earned the number four seed. We'll talk more about our seeded team as we continue. Let's get right to it. Mixed doubles, Candlepin Stars and Strikes from WNDS-TV in Lita Lanes right after this. Here are the five teams that will be competing over the course of the next four weeks in our mixed doubles competition. You see the teams of Cindy Beatrice and John Plant and Deb Regan and Scott Bradish. Today's matchup, then Jennifer Kelly DiBiasso and Mike Morgan, Sue Holleran from Lita Lanes and Ryan Tripp and Cindy Colley and Tim Lipke, the number one seed. And we're ready to begin this afternoon. John Plant will be first to bowl as we get our mixed doubles competition underway from Lita Lanes in Nashua on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Happy to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you along with us on a Saturday or Sunday at noontime. And we are underway. And happy holidays, we might point out as well, as we're into the, uh, the thick of it. And as we tape this show on a Tuesday, it's the first snowy day of the season. The crowd held down a little bit because of the inclement weather, but not, a, not that bad. Actually, more people here than I anticipated yeah, me too. morning. And, and due to the fact that we have 10 bowlers who we'll get to see over the course of the next several weeks, that brings in more of their friends and family. So uh, pretty good turnout for a bad weather day. John Plant starts off with a 10 box. John is 38 years old. He's in the real estate business and the mortgage business. He has a son, John, who's seven years old. He's been bowling for 16 years. Bowling out of Park Place in Wyndham and the Traveling Pro League. He's been on TV eight times over the past few years, all on WNDS. And he'll miss the singleton. John bowled in the World Tournament in November. New Hampshire State doubles champ with Gary Carrington back in 1994. We should point out the uh, the format, which is not all that difficult. In the first string, the male bowler of the uh, the tandem will uh, will bowl first, and in the second string, the women of each respective uh, doubles partnership will begin. And then in the third game, Dick, the teams themselves decide who's got the hotter hand because whoever starts the match or the game gets the ball six boxes versus four. So we let them make the choice on the third This game. is Scott Bradish from Lawrence, a 126 average, a high single of 196, high triple 474, bowling out of Park Place in Wyndham. 29 years old. He has a seven-year-old daughter, Brianna. 
And he and his fiance Jennifer will be married next September. Last time on WNDS, the number four seed beaten by Gary Carrington in January of this past year, 398 to 348. As many have been. <laughs> Missed the head pin. Scott's been bowling for 21 of his 29 years. He got an early start and he has to settle for a seven box. Now we get our first look at Cindy Beatrice from Wilmington. Cindy is 34 years old. She's an assistant office manager for DMI, a printing company. She's married to Carl and has a son, Carl Jr., four. Carl Jr. started bowling at 18 months, and now at age four, he bowls with one hand, a four-year-old. Which is pretty remarkable when you come to think of it. She's not a stranger to television, although it's been a while. 1991, she was on the old Channel 5 show. So it's been a while since she's been on TV. Got a bit of a uh, a right to left break on her ball, much as a ten pin bowler would do. Kind of like you do. Kind of like I do. Yeah. She's got that right hook on it. Yeah. I There's do. a nice spare. I do it much better though as a ten pin bowler, unfortunately, than candle pins. So Cindy gets the first mark of the match in the fourth frame. Now the veteran Deb Regan from Manchester. A lot of credits to her name. There aren't many years that go by that we don't see Deb as one of the participants in the mixed doubles competition. I believe she wasn't in last year. Double one of, check here. One of the nice people that you get to meet in Candleton Bowling. And here's a great spare for Deb Regan. Great competitor, that's for darn sure. Bowling for 21 years. She's recovering from knee surgery. She's hobbling a little bit. She was telling me about it before the match. Working on the spare, right on the head pin. I've heard more than one bowler and athlete say that when you slow down a little bit because of an injury or a pain or something, a lot of times you'll perform better. And perhaps that'll be the case with Deb. Deb's a hairdresser at the debutante in Epping. Will it go? It will not. She has three children, Kelly, Jeffrey, and Lonnie. Works with her daughters who own the beauty shop. Deb once owned it, but she sold it to her daughters and really enjoys working with them. What a great name, though. Her name is Deb Debutante. Debutante. Very clever. Settles for an eight box. I think, I think you should get out for a color or a foil at the Debutante sometime soon. How about a hair replacement? <laughs> <laughs> for a follically challenged person. Uh, I'm sure Deb can take care of that. Here's John you. Plant. John's working on the mark, left for him by Cindy Beatrice. And there they go, in slow motion. Never take your eyes off the pins. Just barely beating the 24-second buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> so John gets the strike. Here it comes again. If we have time in slow motion for you to see it all, it takes a while. There goes the seven. The 10 is waiting, waiting, and it topples. Now back to the action, John looking for three marks in a row and some bonus money. Still working on a strike, has another ball to fill the strike. That's the nine pin that's wobbling and still standing. By the way, should it occur, triple strike jackpot this week is worth $600. John missed the spare. one is split evenly as you might well imagine so he missed the spare and settles for a 10 box Scott Bradish the one and the 10 the wood in the back rolling toward the 10 pin becomes a factor now. Helpful. Well, had oh, to hit my. the head pin. 
Missed that and missed them both. They're both still standing. And a nine box. We'll be getting to your cards and letters and emails that we have received during the course of the last several weeks. Our email address, bowling at WNDS.com. We'd love to hear from you. Love to get your cards and letters and emails. And here's Scott Bradish burying one right in the pocket and leaving the nine. The, yeah, that is the nine pin. The nine pin still standing. Our mailing address is WNDS TV, 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. And we'll get to some of the cards and letters. Scott waiting for that pin to settle as it was rolling back and forth in front of the nine pin. Now he's got a clear shot at it, hit the wood, and missed the pin. But cross lane uh, from the side where the pin was, perhaps he'd had better luck shooting from right to left instead of left to right. But he'll take the 10 for the box anyway. And we have a 10, make that an 18 pin margin now between Cindy and John and Deb and Scott. Nice postcard from Ann Giorgio from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Ann writes, Mike and Dick, I said you were both a treasure and a joy, but you are both charmers. <laughs> Thanks again for the fun and exciting bowling. Health and blessing to you both and all there. Keep bowling. Love to all. And Giorgio from Cambridge. We're charmers now, are we? Well, one of us is. And we'll let you folks guess which one it is. Nine box for Cindy Beatrice. Is uh, no newcomer to the professional ranks. Uh, Cindy Beatrice had two WCBC titles, and last year was ranked number four in the women's side of the World Canopy Bowling Congress. So two WCBC titles. She's uh, she's done nicely. What I think is great about watching someone like Cindy Beatrice, she has her son with her today, four-year-old son. That, oh, and look at that spare! Wow, what a great shot. Cindy Beatrice with the spare. Oh, man. Didn't look like it was possible, did it? But she made it. Watch it again. Off the wall, kicks the five pin, and keeps on going. Uh, Deb Regan. I started to say about Cindy Beatrice, she, she was on television when she was single a while back, got married, had a family, and still continues to bowl candlepin bowlings at, a, at the highest level. And it just goes to show it can be done, and it can be something that can be fun enjoyable dis a distraction from your regular normal rigors of day-to-day -day life and stress relief but for me it's an annual embarrassment when i bowl with you on tv <laughs> as it should be at least it was last year 10 bucks for deb it will be again this year is your buddy ross wheeler having you over for i uh, haven't been there yet i haven't, haven't been to uh, fast lanes in, in uh, stowe but i will be before too long starting to get the the dice balls out and warming <laughs> up again uh, probably this coming march don't have the exact date yet for the pilgrim lanes fundraiser that you'll all be invited to of course it's always fun especially when i win well you've won three out of five years that'll be a nine box for deb Cindy and John pulling away ever so slowly from Deb and Scott. Three marks against Deb and Scott's solo mark in the third frame. Now John's working on the spare that was left for him by Cindy Beatrice. He missed the headpin, but he got a pretty good shot going there. He's got the one of the seven with lots of wood on the deck. Someone would yell from the background, play the wood. Got to hit the head pin. That's the key right here. And he missed it. Kind of a quiet day today. I'm guessing uh, Gary Angelotti hasn't arrived yet. Stuck in Haverhill, probably. And that'll be a nine box. One fourteen through nine for the team of Beatrice and Plant. That's the head pin shot right there. That's what he was looking for last time around. And he's got the five and the eight. Not the best wood in the world. But he has no choice but to use it. Looks like he's going to get it. That's a spare. 
in the 10th frame. 124 plus a ball for the team of Clint Beatrice. John Plant finishes with a good nine pin fill and a 133. First string for the team of John Plant and Cindy Beatrice. So Scott Bradish with some work to do in his final two boxes. And a good first ball for Scott, leaving the seven pin. Candleman Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV presented by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, McMulkin Chevrolet, McMulkin Cadillac, a spare for Scott in the ninth frame, Nashua Hyundai, Nashua Mitsubishi, all in Nashua, New Hampshire on the Daniel Webster Highway and by the games of the New Hampshire Lottery Commission. Tri-State Megabucks in all of the other games. Great holiday gifts as well. But six in the mark. Piece of wood there between the one and the three. Head pin is key. Missed the head pin. Wow. And wasn't even close. They will hit 100, but they'll be at least three marks behind. Has to settle for a six box. It's a 101 for the team of Scott Bradish and Deb Regan. After one, a 32 pin lead for John Plant and Cindy Beatrice over Deb Regan and Scott Bradish. We continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua. It's Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Deb Regan first to bowl, string number two. The team of Deb Regan and Scott Bradish trailing the team of Cindy Beatrice and John Plant by 32 pins as we begin. Good first ball by Deb Regan right in the 1-3 pocket, leaving the five pin. That was rated number six in the WCBC last year, an active professional competition. Just five bowlers doing better than her over the course of the season. Starts off with a spare. Ladies World All Events winner in Maine in 2000 and New Hampshire State All Events winner in 2000, 2001, and 2002. I had an opportunity recently, Michael, to work on radio in Worcester doing a Holy Cross basketball game, filling in for the veteran Bob Foraker, who used to host a Candlepin bowling sure. show himself back up in the days, Bay State Bowling on, on Channel 27. Bob says hello to all of his friends in Candlepin Bowling, by the way. And on the team bus, a lady came up to me and said that she, she's a, an avid Holy Cross follower, travels with the team whenever she can. And she said she never misses our show on television. And she always gets a kick uh, when I remind you that I was from Worcester. <laughs> I think we need to start a little over under pool on how many times I think it's going to mention Worcester per show. Turn this into a money making. <laughs> so, Joan Monahan, happy to have you as a fan of Can Up and Bowling and hope you're with us for many, many years to come. You and your husband, great Holy Cross fans. And it was nice to have an opportunity to meet you. And it would be appropriate that the lead announcer would be from the, uh, the home of Candlepin Bowling, where the game originated in the 1880s. And you were how old then? I don't remember ever telling you I was from Worcester. <laughs> Cindy with a 10 box. Missed the head pin that time. That one got away from her a little bit. That right to left hook just didn't quite bite. I need to find out if she's ever been a 10 pin bowler. I think she's got that look about her, huh? Sure does. That's a good ball, and oh, that's a nice spare. shot. She's come up with, I think, three marks or four so far. Yep. Anyway, at least three. And that was not an easy one. Well placed ball. Watched it right into the uh, one two pocket on the Brooklyn side, and she was able to clean them up. With Scott Bradish on the head pin there. Tough shot remaining for Scott. Six ten on the right, wood between them. Seven on the left. He'll try to scram across. Will it go? No, it won't. You mentioned earlier that uh, he's engaged to Jennifer. They will be getting married September 9th of next year, in case you are looking to send a gift. That'll be a nine box for Scott, that last one coming out of the uh, gutter. 
I wonder if Paramount Bowling Supplies has a bridal registry for uh, <laughs> those that would like to buy Scott something nice. New shoes or a bowling bag. Oh, yeah. A lot of good stuff. Bob Preller runs a fine company. Outfitting the Canopin bowling industry. Haven't seen Bob in ages. Oh, saw we saw him, him at the, at at the, the Hall, Hall of Fame, Fame dinner. Last, was it last year? Two years, Two years ago. ago already? Yeah. yeah. And a seven box for Scott. He's had some trouble finding the head pin and cleaning up the pins. John Plant moves to lane 34. Working on Cindy Beatrice Spare. Runner-up team today takes home $200, and the winner goes on next week to face Jennifer Colley DiBiasio and veteran Mike Morgan. Not much in the spare, just a pair. It's like two, huh? That's a good ball. Cleaned up most of them. The two and the four on the left with the ten on the right remaining. an eight box. That one caught the pocket for John and left a spare opportunity with the two and the five. John Plant recently moving from Lowell, Mass. into the uh, lovely area of Litchfield, New Hampshire. And that's a spare for John. So the mark sends us to the break with a team of Plant and Beatrice in the lead as we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Catch all the action of Candlepin Stars and Strike. Brought to you by the Thompson Family of Dealership, the Tri-State Megabucks, and the New Hampshire Lottery. Saturdays and Sundays at noon on WNDS. Deb Regan ready to bowl as we come back to action in our mixed doubles competition. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Happy to have you with us for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, our annual mixed doubles giving you a chance to watch some of the finest female Candlepin bowlers in the world. Our director today is Kevin LaFawn, Keith Webb's our engineer, Craig Amabello, Larry Haber, and Tanya Paré are our camera crew. Chuck Lothro's on replay, Rich Burke on audio, Steve Kenny on graphics. Kristen Doobie's our timer, and Kate Nichols is handling the scoreboard here at Lita Lanes. All making it possible for you to watch the finest Candlepin bowlers in the world each and every week on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. I think you mentioned uh, Kate Nichols is keeping score and will be the pin runner as well when, uh, you know, pins and wood or whatever gets out of the play area. Uh, Kate Nichols is a, uh, an employee and bowler here, and she was 10th on the leaderboard uh, getting into the, uh, the mixed doubles, so obviously had to be in the top five to make it, but she was number 10. And a spare for Deb Regan. A much needed spare, their second mark of the game for Bradish and Regan. Now Cindy Beatrice working on a spare that John Plant left for her. That's a little full on the head pin, but she put seven in the mark. Tough shot here, a piece of wood to play in the middle of the alley if she so chooses. That's not what she's going to do. She's going to try and clip the two pin, missed it, so they're all still standing. The two on the left, the six and ten on the right, and missed it again, leaves a seven box. And she'll be up against a uh, Deb Regan spare in the sixth box. That's a good first ball. Oh, a little thin in the pocket that time. Just but you a know, little bit too thin. Got a pretty good fall. A hit like that, though, sometimes can get a, a sweeping strike. You just don't know which way the ball's going to carry him off of the, uh, the head pin when it hits. 2-7 on the left, 6-10 on the right, hitting the two pin. Key right here. Missed it. she take the two on the right she will and she'll settle for an eight box
Scott Bradish working on a mark right now. They're trying to cut into that lead. It was 32 pins after one. That's a good first ball for Scott, but a tough spare leave here, the 5-10. His right to left ball, or left to right ball, I should say, coming in the 1-2 pocket. With a tough shot here. He tried to cut the five pin over to the 10, couldn't do it. He's averaging 126 these days, bowling out of Park Place in Windham. Again, he 29. missed the five pin in eight box. Missing the head pin this time, leaving the four horsemen on the right. Whoop. Well, four horsemen. Three out of the four one. horsemen. Yeah. And uh, there goes D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan just fell down. Oh, that right. was pretty, wasn't it? Watch it one more time. The ball did a lot of work on that one to the right side, burying the six and the ten. Now John Plant on lane 34. John threw it past the head pin, and he almost had the four horsemen himself. He's got the four, the seven, and the nine. A lot of wood on the deck. This is a makeable shot with that wood right now. Oh. I'm really surprised at that. Thought he'd get more out of it than just one. And that will be a 10 box. Both teams have two marks this string. High string of the day goes uh, an extra $50 to the team. They'll split that, of course. At the end of the, uh, the rainbow is a $1,500 payday after week number four. Good first ball for John. Ten pin with just uh, a bit of wood over to the left. Not really a factor. I mean, it could be if he missed far enough, the ball might deflect over. And a 30 pin lead over the course of the match for Beatrice and Plant. About where they started at the beginning of this game. Deb Regan working on a mark. Can she break up the split? No. The seven and the ten. Deb throws her arms in the air, looks skyward. Be a nice uh, wall shot if she can pull this one off as she's got wood right in front of both the seven and the ten. Takes the seven, takes them one at a time. Ten box. One o two through nine. She could use another mark right here. Missed the head pin. Difficult but makeable shot. Well, we didn't see this year, Dick. Uh, did not qualify as Joanne Rosano, who is a uh, frequent player, as Deb Regan is. Cindy Cotley, I, you know, I did mention her at the beginning of the show as one of the, uh, the returning veterans. Mike Morgan, Tim Lipke, and Deb Regan. She's the top key with Tim Lipke, so I did not mention her as uh, one of the veterans. But uh, Joanne Rosano finishing a disappointing 18th place. You need to be in the top five, of course, to get on the show. Uh, Deb found the opening twice and threw it right through it twice, so it's a 109 second string for Bradish and Regan. Now Cindy Beatrice working on a mark. They can really open up some distance here. Good shot, good first ball, good fill, eight pins. And another spare opportunity here for Cindy Beatrice. And she's got it. She has been hot on those spares to Dick. I'm wondering, What's the decision going to be, John or Cindy? Who do you think is going to bowl the more boxes? I get to choose. Would not I would not hazard a guess. Cindy's first ball 
will take out six. Four horsemen on the left side. They're both bowling pretty well, but Cindy's really had a knack for picking up some interesting spin. Her right to left hook now for the four horsemen on the left side. Let's see if she uses it. She's got a shot at it. There it is. $50 in bonus money. They are running away with this match. It'll be better than 40 pins going into the final Watch it start. again. You saw the end of it. The four horsemen. That hook on her ball was perfect for that shot. 116 plus a ball. And here comes the ball. Right into the 1 3 pocket. Put six in it. And it's a 122 second string. A two string total of 255 and a 45 pin lead over the team of Deb Regan and Scott Bradish. We come back for string number three right after this. But first, a break. You're watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua on WNDS TV. John Plant will bowl first for the team of Plant and Cindy Beatrice. And they carry a 45-pin lead over Deb Regan and Scott Bradish into the third string. The winner climbs the ladder to take on our third seeded team of Jennifer Calvin DiBiasso and Mike Morgan. Be nice to see Michael again. Will be great to see Mike. We did see him earlier last year. He didn't fare too well. John was hoping that that rolling pin would wipe out the, the 10 pin, but it did not. Certain people that seem to uh, get on the double throw frequently like Morgan. Got an email from Sean Galvin of Weymouth, Massachusetts. Inquiring about the whereabouts of Irene McGowan, one of our loyal fans who has been with us for many years, the lady with the lovely white hair who used to sit in the front row all the time and hasn't been with us now for probably a year and a half, and a lot of people inquire about her health and well-being. We're assured her health is good, and she's just not able to get here any longer from the North Shore of Massachusetts. And her, her thoughts are with all of the bowlers and all of the fans, and uh, we miss her, wish her well, and appreciate your asking about her. And she was one of the regulars here for many, many, many years. Irene, we miss you. Have a happy holiday season. We could get lots of questions about various people that you see every week in the audience. These are people who love the game and come out to all the tapings. And even before Dick and I took over the show on other programs. So uh, they're better known than we are, that's for sure. Great fans of this wonderful game. Scott Bradish now has a makeable spare. It's a split, but he's got some wood to help him out. See if he goes to the right side. No. Our thanks to uh, Sean Galvin for the email and the inquiry. Once again, we love to hear from you. Our email address, bowling at WNDS.com. Just that simple, bowling at WNDS.com. We'd love to hear from you. And we try to get to as many emails and cards and letters as we can during the course of our program. That's a good shot by Scott. Cindy Beatrice now, two-time WCBC title holder and has been making some fabulous spares today. And, and a pretty a good strike. strike. Yeah. John, are you sure that you made the right decision to start? <laughs> Cindy is on fire. You know, watching her expression after she makes great shots, you can tell that she's made the great shots before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a shock. Like, no. Nope. Did I do that? Yeah. Very calm under pressure for having been on television only once. Another great shot there. Puts the spare inside the strike. They'll have a chance to score bonus money. After the break, there's Deb Regan with a good first ball. It was a solid pop hit. Captain Rapani went down, leaving 4 7. Puts a 7 in the spare. 
missed the spare opportunity. And has to settle for a nine box. Up against a mark in the fourth frame. And a chance to really fall off the cliff. Missed the head pin. The seven wobbles, but will not go. Four horsemen left side, nine pin in the back row. Piece of wood, not a factor. Depp gave it a good run, but she will be open. Depp passions away from work, holding his reading. Kevin Regan. And that'll be an eight box for Deb Regan. We go to the break. And it is a lead of 50 plus pins for Cindy Beatrice and John Plant over Deb Regan and Scott Bradish. We continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua with Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. John Plant's looking for some more bonus money for his, the team of Plant and Cindy Beatrice right now. He's working on two marks that were left for him by Cindy. A strike and a spare. They already have $50 in bonus money, plus they'll have the high spring in the match. And an opportunity for more bonus money right here with a spare opportunity for John Plant. Got the three and the six with a piece of wood right in front of the three pin. Michael, you can make this shot maybe 40 or 50 percent of the time. <laughs> I want to mention that uh, we'll try to get $50 away in the bonus ball competition. If they can match what's on the card, our uh, sender will receive $50 cash. John Plant looking for four marks in a row and another 25 bucks puts six in this spare. They have a 73 half already. There's an opportunity. He played it well, but was not able to convert. And he'll take a nine box. They've just about salted it away. Mathematically, I suppose it's still possible, but the reality of it is it's highly unlikely. That one got away from Scott. He just gets one pin. The four pin on the left side. Everything else is still standing. Terrible sound when you throw the ball. You only hear one thump. It's better than hearing nothing, I suppose. Uh, yeah, but barely. At least you seem to have an easy spare when you've got the full rack. And an eight box. They need to run the table with marks starting now. Well, to, even if they get a mark here, it's still going to be about 50 plus. Almost impossible. Good first ball there, but he can't break up the split. Gave it a good shot. Nice yeah. Played the wood in the middle and just didn't get a break. It's been that kind of a match. And he settled for 10 bucks. So six to five pins in four boxes be the biggest comeback we've ever seen. We've seen that from maybe six boxes left, not four. Of them. Yeah. Cindy Beatrice continues yeah. to be on target. Good first ball right there. Missed the spare there that time, though. For Cindy's qualifying, she had uh, five strings of 111, 110, 112, 128, and 122. Pretty consistent. Yep, for 583. Fifth in women. Nine box. No pressure at this point. They'll just run the string out. Move on next week. To take on Jennifer Colley Diviasio and veteran Mike Morgan. They did not try out his teams. They tried out right. men Glad you against the men, the women against the women, and they were paired after their finish. That's the fifth-seeded right. woman was paired with a fifth-seeded man. Fourth-seeded woman with a fourth-seeded man, and so on. They may not have even known each other. I suppose it's not likely, uh, but no, it's I, possible. I, I, I do believe that uh, 
Carlos, I spoke with earlier in the week, had not met her partner before. Almost kind of like a blind date of bowling. And that's a seven box for Sydney. So that team is at 98, Beatrice and Plant through eight. Deb Regan on lane 34, right on the head pin. A little bit too full. Pounding the head pin today and some good pocket hit. Got out well. Takes the two on the left. Very accurate boulder. And a nine box. Jennifer Kelly DiBiasso and Mike Morgan next week. Sue Holleran and Ryan Tripp the following week. And Cindy Colley and Tim Lipke, the top seeded team the week after that. Here's Deb Regan with a good nine pin fall. And just the nine pin in the back row still standing. Nope, that one got away from her. That one slipped out of her hand. You can tell as soon as it left her hand. And she'll settle for a nine box right there. So this one well in hand for the team of Beatrice and Plant. And they will advance to take on Callie DiBiasso and Morgan next week. There's a good first ball by John Plant, somewhat of an exclamation point. Watch this quickly because it doesn't take long for the pins to go down. There they go. Even in slow motion, they went down quickly. We'll have our bonus ball contest at the end of the match and an opportunity for you at home to become part of our action. After every match, we will reach into the drum and pull out a card and a boulder from our winning team. We'll try to match the number of pins that is on the card and the winner gets a prize, a cash prize, $50 in the, in the jackpot right now. The loser, a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchin in Massachusetts. Look at that shot by John Plant. That's a pretty good spare, isn't it? That was a beauty. And a Just chance for bonus money here as he cut the three pin over to the seven. The wood is what made that shot happen. Felled wood on the line. Beautiful shot by John Plant. So looking for some more bonus money. With the last ball, here's Plant threw it right on the nose. Put six in the spare. And a 134 and a three string total of 389. So that went the high spin with that 134. Let's see if we can give some bonus money out to the team of Regan and Bradish. Four horsemen on the left side. No spare that time. So we'll watch his first ball in the 10th frame. See if he can get three strikes in a row. That would be the last hope for a big finish. And it will not be a strike, so there will not be a triple strike jackpot. So we'll go to the break as the team of John Plant and Cindy Beatrice will advance. We will come back to meet our boulders right after this from Lita Lanes in Nashua. You're watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Final score of the match, as you see on the screen right there, is uh, 389 to 309. The team of Cindy Beatrice and John Plant defeating Deb Regan and Scott Bradish as we welcome you back to Lita Lanes in Nashua. And we're joined by Deb Regan and Scott Bradish. And Deb was telling me before we came on the air what a wonderful time she had here today in this match. <laughs> Wasn't it a wonderful time? It was a great time. <laughs> Fabulous. Now you tell me you hurt your knee and you came back from surgery. And that is, is it a little bit difficult to, 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 to come back from a rehabbing a situation? Do you, are you feeling it? Do you think about it? Does it make you distressed? Distract you? I think so. It's it's still real swollen and sore, so I, I'm going to say yes, but I can't blame that. It felt good today, so I don't know what to say. Well, Deb, you've been at this a long time, so you, you have a bad day, but you learn how to get over it pretty exactly. quickly, right? Exactly. I mean, you think have to about get over it. You get to move on to the next day. Exactly. Not going to change. No, not for a hundred bucks anyway. But no. it's always fun to have you here, and we always look forward to you participating almost every year. Thanks. 
Thank you. Welcome. Good to be here. And Scott Bradish, how'd you like the doubles format? I uh, didn't like it too much today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can always count on Candlepin Bolas for honesty, right? Yeah. Just off a little bit today. Well, you'll be back. You're old enough, too, to know that uh, life does go on. Oh, yeah. You got a seven-year-old daughter. Have you introduced her to the game yet? Yeah, she likes it. It's just a hobby, though, there for her. Go. All right. Well, good luck. We'll Great. see you again. Scott and Deb, thanks very much. We'll hand out the checks here. hundred bucks a piece for you for coming here today, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks Thank very you. much. Deb Regan and Scott Bradish, our runner-up. And now, Cindy Beatrice will come up to lane 33. Mike will pull a card out of the bin, and we're going to try to give away $50 in cash. Let's see if all the information is there. It appears as though it is. This is Arthur LeBlanc from Gardner, Massachusetts. And Cindy, Arthur wants you to get eight pins down for him for $50. And let's see if we can do that. We'll see if we can give away $50 in cash or a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. There's six, seven, eight, fifty dollars in bonus money. And that goes to Arthur LeBlanc from Gardner, Massachusetts. Come right between us. Well, you're gonna have a new fan out there. You just made somebody 50 bucks. 50 bucks for Arthur LeBlanc. You think you can go up there every time and just say somebody give me a seven and you can knock down a seven just that easily? That'd be nice. That would be nice. Thank you. Now, it's been a long time since you've been on television. 1991, you were telling me the last time you were on the Channel 5 show. Uh, in those 13 years, has it changed at all? Does the feeling change coming under the lights? Do you remember how it was the first time? Oh, I remember. It's still